Lástima bala, cabrón. Today's movie is about a hardworking dad out to provide for his daughter, who uses a boring pool cleaning job as a front for his real gig, hunting and killing vampires. But when he mistakenly kills a vampire related to the oldest vampire ever, the life of his family is now at stake. How will he be able to protect his family from this blood-sucking demon, who has the mind to bury her fellow vampire under thick cement? Sit back and enjoy. Hello, and welcome to I Am Movies. Bud Jablonski, a vampire hunter who earns a living by selling their teeth, money, works at an incredibly filthy pool. Armed with his trusty guns, but is no ordinary pool cleaner. Immediately he is sure no one is around. He enters a house, sets up wire barriers, and hunts down bloodthirsty vampires in the pitch black darkness. From a room emerges an old lady, her eyes filled with curiosity. What are you doing in my room? Without hesitation, but takes aim and fires. The lady crumples to the floor, seemingly lifeless. However, in a spine-chilling twist, her body contorts, and she rises as a vampire, her wounds miraculously healing before Bud's very eyes. She lunges at him, rendering his powerful firearm useless. The bullets bounce off her, as if they were mere confections. Desperate, Bud strikes her with a dagger, only to be met with a vile spray of vampire fluid. Bud refuses to yield. He relentlessly fires his gun, but she knocks him down. In the heat of the struggle, a glass shard slices Bud's hand, drawing forth his crimson life force. In a moment of pain and determination, he removes the fragment and continues. You see, vampires possess various powers, each linked to their age. This particular vampire, the old lady, has a body as supple and flexible as a contortionist. Evading Bud's attacks with uncanny grace, she is a formidable foe. New mist! Yet Bud remains undeterred, impaling her chest with a wooden stake and severing her head from her body. Victory is within his grasp, but the saga doesn't end there. Suddenly, a young vampire bursts into the house, his hunger for blood driving him forward. Tragically for him, as he crosses the threshold, the invisible silver wire becomes his lethal nemesis. It slices through his neck, sealing his fate, but extracts fangs from both fallen vampires with steely resolve and returns home. Meanwhile, Audrey, a wealthy real estate woman, Do you know what the definition of insanity is, Sasha? reveals her true nature as a vampire with extraordinary abilities. She cruelly punishes a middle-aged vampire for refusing to give up his property by burying him alive. Meanwhile, Bud steps into his hotel to freshen up. The dangers of his work made him live here, ensuring the safety of Jocelyn and Paige, his wife and daughter. Bud picks Paige up from school, then heads to Jocelyn's house, where he discovers she plans to sell it. The reason behind this decision is to gather enough funds for Paige's school fees and braces. Bud's heart sinks at the thought of losing his chance to be with Paige if they move away. He pleads with Jocelyn to reconsider and promises to arrange the required money. Jocelyn told him she needs the money within seven days, but assures her that he will provide the funds on time. Till Monday. Just give me till Monday. Pleading for her to let Paige stay, determined to keep them together. Bud embarks on a mission to sell the vampire fangs. At a shop, Bud is offered a meager sum of $800 by the shopkeeper Troy. Outraged, Bud demands a fair deal and Troy suggests selling the fangs to the Union, a group of vampire hunters known for higher prices. Bud used to be a member of the Union but was expelled for breaking their rules. Nonetheless, he decides to sell only the young vampire's teeth to them. Meanwhile, Audrey discovers the dead old lady vampire and instructs her assistant to find the killer. But seeks the help of his union friend Big J to rejoin the organization. However, the director presents Bud's past rule violations and initially refuses to rehire him. Bud convinces the director that he will follow the rules and is allowed to rejoin, but with Seth as his partner to keep an eye on him during the day shift. Reluctantly, Bud approaches Seth to sell the fangs. Seth offers $10,000 but deducts $8,000 for Bud's debts. Bud accepts the money, sensing Seth's dislike towards him. The director informs Seth that Bud will be expelled if he commits any crimes. Bud prepares his gun and weapons to start his day shift. It turns out Seth knows more about vampires than Bud does. He reveals a 700-year-old vampire associated with the European drug mafia. Despite Seth's knowledge, he has never been on a field mission or killed a vampire. Seth wants to follow Bud in, but Bud insists that Seth stay in the car for his safety, ignoring the rules. What you're gonna do is you're gonna stay in this car with that in mind here. Meanwhile, Audrey visits Troy's shop, where she sees the young vampire's teeth. She demands to know who provided them. Troy claims ignorance, prompting Audrey to drive a stake into his hand. Troy finally reveals that Bud is responsible, but he did that too late. Meanwhile, Bud battles three teenage vampires who viciously attack him at the bowling alley. He easily beats two, but one gives him some difficulty. Seth receives a call from his boss, who inquires about the situation. Seth claims to be waiting in the car, but his boss asks him to enter and observe Bud's activities if he wants a promotion. Seth enters the scene and witnesses the vampire overpowering Bud. 
desperate to help, but implores Seth to grab the nearby gun. Seth was scared as hell but managed to pass the gun, but manages to kill the vampire and extract its tooth. All the vampire propaganda scared Seth out of his wit, and he lost control and peed on himself, but made him sit in the trunk of the car. On getting to his hotel room, but collides with his newly moved neighbor Heather, they introduce themselves in part ways. The following day, when Bud went to pick up Seth, he wrote out the book Seth had left in his car the previous day. Turns out Seth has written down lots of violations that he plans to show the Union, but told Seth that if they had followed the rule the previous day, it would have been killed. They head to Troy's shop and stumble upon Troy's lifeless body. The vampires had used Troy's teeth to leave a message for Bud. Seeing the gruesome sight, Seth seeks to call the Union for help, but stops him stating that it will stop their haunt. He explains that he needs a few days to gather funds or he was going to lose his family. That means if you call Seeger, I'm gonna lose my family. While in the car, the renowned vampire hunters, the Nazarian brothers, approach Bud and invite him to join them on a vampire hunt. Bud prefers working alone as a one-man soldier, but the promise of more money convinces him to team up with them. Armed and ready, they head to a vampire-infested house. Inside the house, they encounter a swarm of vampires, but told Seth to stay away from the walls. All right, stay away from the walls. The Nazarian brothers fight ferociously, while Bud discovers the vampire's hidden lair. A fierce battle ensues with Bud and the brothers facing off against the bloodthirsty creatures. Everyone is busy cutting off vampires' heads. When I say everyone, yes, Seth's including. Amidst the chaos, Seth is in a comical struggle with a vampire. The vampire could have easily slain him, but he is lucky the Nazarian brothers come to his rescue. After the intense fight, they extracted the fangs, but Seth noticed something unusual. Different types of vampires coexisting together. You know, he reads a lot about vampires. Look, he reads a few books and he thinks he knows more than the pros. Later on, Bud takes his daughter, Paige, to a birthday party. Paige is having fun with her friends. However, her delight is short-lived when Bud receives a call from Audrey. She finally gets his information. She threatens to harm Jocelyn and Paige. Almost immediately, a group of menacing men arrives at the scene. But knowing they are in danger, he escapes with Paige in his car. Knowing the hell of a ride ahead, Bud engages Paige in a car chase game with her headphones on, and then the race begins. After successfully escaping the guys, some losing their lives, Bud arrives home, thinking his problems are over for the day. But as he opens the door, he found that Audrey holds Jocelyn captive. He saw Seth lying on the floor, clearly bitten by Audrey. Now the whole family is at Audrey's mercy. Jocelyn needs clarification and demands an explanation from Bud. At this point, Bud has to tell her the truth about his job. I hunt vampires. Audrey tells Bud that the dead old vampire was precious to her and reveals her plan to turn Paige into a vampire as revenge. After knocking out Bud, she takes Jocelyn and Paige away. An hour later, Bud regains consciousness, his senses returning. To his horror, he witnesses Seth transform into a vampire. Fangs protrude from Seth's mouth, his reflection vanishing into thin air as if consumed by the shadows. Struggling to control his newfound instincts, Seth lunges toward Bud, driven by an insatiable thirst for blood. Filled with fear, Bud believes there is no choice but to sever Seth's head from his body. Regret washes over Bud like a torrent, mourning his hasty decision. In the act of remorse, he humbly apologizes to Seth's lifeless form as if seeking forgiveness from a fallen soul. However, the unthinkable unfolds before Bud's bewildered eyes. Seth's head defies nature's laws by speaking, shocking Bud to his core. Let me tell you this, he gained powers because Audrey turned Seth into a vampire. Seth gently places his head back on his head, allowing his head to control his hand. So Bud and Seth drive in his car as he meets Heather. He knew that Heather is the one who has given out his details. Heather explains that she has no choice. She is also a vampire and Audrey is her maker. She goes on to tell Bud about Audrey, who is a 700 years vampire. She is after Bud because the lady he killed is Audrey's daughter. That was Audrey's daughter. Seth enters almost at that moment as he struggles to hold his head. Heather is kind and offers Seth some blood, which he enjoys, as this is the first blood he tastes as a vampire. Heather tells Bud about Audrey's hideout, and with a plan in place, they head over to the place. Meanwhile, Audrey is about to bite Paige's neck at her hideout. Still, Jocelyn defends her, making Audrey shift her attack on her. But her assistant alerts her of Bud's presence as he smells him. He orders a pack of vampires to guard the place, but Bud comes prepared. Unleashing a hail of bullets, Bud valiantly fights back, each shot piercing through the darkness. Although Seth faces his own onslaught, his vampire powers shield him from harm, rendering vampire attacks futile. Heather and Seth fought side by side, defending Bud from vampire attacks. Amidst the chaos, Big J, armed with a machine gun, arrives at the scene. Seth messaged him earlier. Big G works the night shift, 
So the team splits up. Big G and Bud will go upstairs to Audrey's room while Seth and Heather fight the vampires. But as Bud and Big G moved in, vampires came out from different angles and attacked them. They fought back, with one vampire biting Big G in the neck. Seeing that the vampire was increasing in numbers, John selflessly urges Bud to press on, sealing himself within the cave as he shuts the gate close. With a final act of bravery, Big J detonates an explosive device strapped to his body. With a booming sound, Bud knew Big J was dead. As Bud enters the cave, Audrey's assistant attacks him further. But Seath and Heather save the day. This gives Bud a chance, and he sneaks into Audrey's room, where she holds his two precious tools captive and Audrey's assistant met a terrible death as Heather and Seth ripped his two arms apart. And that is the end of this assistant vampire. Now, back to the main deal. Bud shot a bullet at Audrey, and she morphs into her vampire form in a dazzling display of superhuman speed, attacking Bud. Each blow lands with hurricane force, but finds himself locked in a desperate struggle for survival, Audrey's powers overwhelming him with every passing moment. Just as all hope seems lost, Jocelyn intervenes, thrusting a weapon into Audrey's back momentarily halting her advance. Audrey attacked Jocelyn. As she was about to attack, Bud shot her from behind. But she turns and laughs manically and spits out the bullet. Audrey hurdles toward Bud with breathtaking speed, as the predator closes in on its prey. But Bud, standing firm with his eyes closed, waiting for his trick to the job. Earlier on, when Audrey was chasing Jocelyn, Bud has set his thin silver wire, and it does its work slicing Audrey's head swiftly. The ancient vampire, whose thirst for vengeance knew no bounds, finally meets her long-awaited demise. The lifeless body crumples to the floor, joining the fallen vampires in eternal slumber. United in her triumph, Seth and Heather stand alongside Bud, their resolve unbroken. Embracing his destiny, Seth proclaims himself a hunter of the night, dedicated to ridding the world of the vampire scourge. As the dust settles, the Union head arrives, confronting Bud with a litany of violations, threatening to strip him of his position. However, with his knowledge of loopholes within the rules, Seth fiercely defends Bud, ultimately preserving his place within the organization. Bud, humbled by the sacrifices made and the truth revealed, embraces Jocelyn, offering her a life together, bound by love and transparency. Their lips meet in a passionate kiss, sealing their commitment to one another. Witnessing this heartfelt moment, Paige radiates joy and states she also wants to be a vampire hunter, to which her parents say no. As they depart, a figure emerges from the cavern's depths. That's Big J, his soul still aflame. Lighting a cigarette, he breathes in deeply, savoring the bittersweet victory. I love this place, he mutters. That's what I love about LA. The echoes of their harrowing journey resonating in his words, signifying both an end and a beginning. And this is where the movie ends. I hope you enjoyed this recap. See you in the next one. And that's the end of this recap. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more. Thanks for watching and see you at the next one.